Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. So today I'll be solving a problem that is asked in International Mathematical Olympiad 2019 question number 4. So let's check the question. The question is we have to find all positive integers k and n. This ordered pair we have to calculate which is satisfying the given equation. The given equation is k factorial is equal to 2 raised to power of n minus 1 multiplied by 2 raised to power of n minus 2 so on up to 2 raised to power of n minus 2 raised to power of n minus 1. So before I start solving this question I need two terms. First one is this notation I will be using frequently in the question that is Vp of n. Vp of n denotes the highest power of p that divides capital N and the second is legendary formula. I will be using this formula frequently. So if you don't know about this formula I have a separate video and the links will be given in the description. Please feel free to check out. So let's start solving this question. So step 1 is we will be calculating the maximum power of 2 that divides capital L of n. Now capital L of n is equal to this much. I take this right hand side is equal to capital L of n that is 2 raised to power of n minus 1 multiplied by 2 raised to power of n minus 2 multiplied by 2 raised to power of n minus 4 so on up to 2 raised to power of n minus 2 raised to power of n minus 1. Now I will be calculating the maximum power of 2 that divides capital L of n. So first I will write L of n as uh, if I take 2 common from this term if I take n if I take 4 common from this term so the so on in the sequence I'll calculate the maximum power of 2 that divides capital L of n here I'll take 2 raised to power of n minus 1 common so that will be 2 raised to power of 1 plus 2 plus 3 so on up to n minus 1 from the last term now remaining terms I'm right so this term is unchanged because I didn't take anything common so this is 2 raised to power of n minus 1 Similarly, the second term is if I take 2 common from here, this term will become 2 raised to the power of n minus 1 minus 1. Similarly, the third term 2 raised to the power of n minus 2 minus 1. So on up to the last term, if I take 2 raised to the power of n minus 1 common from this last term, the remaining is 2 raised to the power of 1 minus 1. Now, starting with this term, this is our odd term because even minus 1 is odd. Again, all these terms are not contributing into, so I can directly calculate the maximum power of 2 which is dividing capital L of n. So V2 of capital L of n is equal to 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 so on up to n minus 1 that will be equal to the sum of first n minus 1 natural number is equal to n into n minus 1 whole divided by 2. So I got V2 of capital N is equal to n into n minus 1 by 2. Now moving on to the step 2 we will be calculating V2 of k. Here v2 of k this notation means the maximum power of 2 that divides k factorial. As you can see in the previous step we have calculated for capital L of n that is right hand side. Now we will be calculating for LHS that is left hand side that is k factorial and that is given by legendary formula. So v2 the maximum power of 2 that divides capital k factorial is given by summation greatest integer function of k whole divided by 2 raised to the power of i. And here this index is varying from 1 to infinity. Now as as of now I don't have the value of k so I can estimate the v2 v2 of k factorial. If I remove the greatest integer function this will come as less than and I'll get summation i is equal to 1 to infinity k upon 2 raised to the power of i. Now the summation is dependent on i it is not dependent on k I can take k outside this will be converted as k summation 1 to 2 raised to the power of i i is varying from 1 to infinity and here I can this is a geometric progression I can calculate this infinite geometric series sum that is 1 plus 1 by 4 sorry 1 by 2 plus 1 by 4 plus 1 by 8 so on up to infinity that is a upon s infinity is given as a upon 1 minus r so as s infinity will be equal to 1 so v2 of k I can estimate that maximum power of 2 that divides k factorial is less than k so using this I can establish a relation between k and n. So the step 3 is the inequality between k and n. So the maximum power that divides the RHS side that is capital N we have that is n into n minus 1 whole divided by 2 on LHS side that is less than k. So I have this relation between n and k. If I take factorial then the inequality will remain same so I can write this as n into n minus 1 whole divided by 2 factorial is less than k factorial. This will be useful later on. Now the next step is 
estimation of capital L of n. Here this is capital L of n. So again I'll write capital L of n as 2 raised to the power of n minus 1 as it is 2 raised to the power of n minus 2 multiplied by 2 raised to the power of n minus 4 so on up to 2 raised to the power of n minus 2 raised to the power of n minus 1. Now as you can see this term is greater than 2 raised to the power of n because I am subtracting something. So this term is again greater than 2 raised to the power of n. This term is again greater than 2 raised to the power of n. So on the last term is also greater than 2 raised to the power of n. So I can estimate L of n is less than if I write every term as 2 raised to the power of n. I will get 2 raised to the power of n whole raised to the power of n. So I can estimate capital L of n. So capital L of n is less than 2 raised to the power of n square. One more relation I got. I can estimate capital L of n. Now the next step is in the previous step we have estimated the value of capital N that is less than 2 raised to the power of n square. Now in this step we claim that 2 raised to the power of n square is less than n into n minus 1 whole divided by 2 factorial. And this is really important because as you can see from the equation there are infinite possibilities for this equation and we have to find capital N and N for which uh, this they are satisfying this equation and they are positive. So using this equation will have limited solution. That's why this is really useful and this is very logical point here. So here this is this inequality is true for n is greater than or equal to 6. Now for you can check for easily for the small numbers n is equal to 1 you will get 2 is less than 1 that is incorrect. For n is equal to 2 you will get 2 raised to the power 4 that is less than 1 that is also incorrect. For n is equal to 3 so on up to n is equal to 5 you can check. But for n is equal to 6 it is true. Let's check 2 raised to the power 36 is less than 15 factorial and 15 factorial you can rewrite this as 2 raised to the power 36 less than you can write this as 6 into 9 into 10 raised to the power 10 that is clearly true so we're going to use this in the next step now in the step 6 we'll summarize all the inequalities we have done till now okay so first one we have summarized that uh, I'm going to summarize here is first one I have estimated the capital value of capital N that is less than 2 raised to the power of n square and 2 raised to the power of n square in the previous step I have estimated this is less than uh, n into n minus 1 whole divided by 2 factorial. Now in the previous step when I have calculated the maximum power of 2 that is dividing LHS and RHS there I have established one inequality that is n into n minus 1 whole divided by 2 is less than k. Now, if you take factorial on both sides you less it will be less than k factorial. Okay. And as you can see, I took this right hand side is equal to capital L of n. So k factorial is equal to ln L of n. So as you can see, there is a contradiction because our claim was this is true for n is greater than or equal to 6. Now this is not true because here k factorial is equal to L of n. So in the next step, we'll be calculating manually for n is less than 5 because for n is greater than or equal to 6 this is not true so we'll be calculating manually for n is less than or equal to 5 so starting with l is equal to 1 so l of 1 is equal to 1 now the right hand side value is equal to 1 when you put n is equal to 1 okay now is there any value of k which is satisfying 1 so is there any positive integer which is possible for k for which the answer will be 1 yes 1 factorial so this is one of the solution Next is L2. If you calculate L2, you will get 6. Now any value of k which is possible so that I can get some, some factorial is equal to 6. That is possible that is 3 factorial. So this is also true. L3, if you calculate L3, the value of L3, you will get uh, 168. And 168 is between 5 factorial that is 120 and 6 factorial that is 720. So in this case, there is no value of k which is satisfying 168. So L3 is not possible. Now let's calculate L4. So L4 will be equal to if you calculate you will get 20,160 and that is between 7 factorial and 8 factorial. So this is also incorrect. Now I'll calculate L5. So L5 is between uh, L5 if you calculate it will be equal to 99 million 99,360. And that is between uh, 10 factorial and 11 factorial. There is no value of k which is satisfying this. 
so i have only two answers two ordered pair which are possible l1 so the value of k and n the ordered pair which are possible is uh, 1 comma 1 and the next one is 3 comma 2 as you can see the value of n is 2 and the value of k is 3 so only two ordered pair which is satisfying this given equation so this is the final answer k is equal to 1 and n is equal to 1 and second is n is equal to 2 and k is equal to 3 this is the final answer so if you like my method please like and subscribe thank you